We need to reduce emissions and we need to do it fast, but we still need to power the economies of the world. So until there's enough renewable energy available worldwide, we need to keep using fossil fuels, but that means more emissions. Enter carbon capture and storage. Here's how it works. The CO2 emitted from the smokestacks of power stations and other industrial processes like steel and cement production is captured, compressed, and then transported by ship, road, or pipeline and stored deep underground in geological formations or in old, empty oil and gas reservoirs. And because specialists in the oil and gas industry already largely have the skills needed to switch over to this process, everyone's a winner. Or are they? Well, opponents say developing this technology will just allow fossil fuel companies to keep drilling and extracting. Plus, there are fears the CO2 could leak back into the atmosphere. But something has to be done. Emissions are still rising, and we look set to overshoot the temperature target of one and a half degrees centigrade. So we must find a way to stop the rot. Another idea is direct air capture, or DAC, where you extract CO2 directly from the air mix it with water and put it underground. The captured CO2 could also help produce low carbon jet fuel and be used to supply businesses such as drinks companies and food producers. These technologies are all a long way from being utilized at the scale required. You would need millions of DAC machines around the world to have any effect. And therein lies the conundrum. Upscaling carbon capture technology might just divert investment away from sustainable solutions and prolong the extraction of fossil fuels. But the way we're going, the solutions we need are not going to be in place soon enough. What is certain, one way or another, a route to a zero carbon future has to be found.